So in summary, it is the inherited mutations that you obtained from your mom and dad that will provide cancer predisposition. However, it's the acquired mutations that eventually will trigger cancer development. So right now, let's take a look at what is actually DNA, the source of these mutations. So DNA is, in essence, a program code that your cells use in order to function. And this program code is composed of four repeating units, chemical bases or nucleotides, that for sake of simplicity, we will just label as A, C, T, and G. But what is unique about these nucleotides or these chemicals is that they can bond with one another. They can pair up with each other. So that A always pairs up with T, while C always pairs up with G. But what might not be well known is how frequently your DNA is actually damaged. And by one estimate, it is believed that your DNA is damaged about 70,000 times. And that is actually per cell per day. So considering that you have trillions of cells in your body, you can appreciate how much DNA damage actually occurs inside your entire body. And therefore, this provides a huge amount of potential for mutagenesis. So what kind of damages are we talking about? About 20% of that includes loss of those chemical base pairs or nucleotides. The most frequent damage, however, is nicking of one of the DNA strands or breaking single DNA strand. Later on, I will be talking about one of the enzymes involved in repairing this type of damage, but this damage is still dangerous because it can lead to break in both strands of DNA, double-stranded DNA damage, or basically breaking your DNA in half. This type of damage is not common. Only about 25 of such events take place out of those 70,000 DNA lesions. However, these are quite dangerous. And the reason why is because it allows for substitution of genetic material from completely different source of, source of your genome. And this brings me to the famous BRCA proteins that encoded by the BRCA genes. These proteins are actually involved in fixing this type of double-stranded DNA damage. So you can appreciate that if this type of molecular robot is non-functional, this would promote cancer development. And in fact, BRCA gene mutations are some of the most common mutations found in both hereditary breast and ovarian cancers. So predisposing mutations are involved in proteins that take place in your DNA repair or proteins involved in cell cycle that help to regulate the DNA repair. I like to call proteins your tiny little molecular robots. And if these tiny little molecular robots within your cells are impacted, they naturally will increase your risk of cancer development. This can involve genes of low penetrance versus high penetrance. What do I mean by that? Penetrance is the severity of the disease outcome. So you can see that the vast majority of genes, predisposing genes in your body will actually be of the low penetrance variety and only a small portion will be the genes that are of high penetrance. Nevertheless, they're both important the low penetrant, penetrance genes you can use for surveillance of cancer development, whereas the high penetrance genes, you would want to be acting upon that. So you will want to change medical management to prevent cancer development. And a good example of high penetrance genes are the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes. And right here, 
we see an example of some of the published literature of your likelihood, if you're a woman, of developing breast or ovarian cancer by the age of 70 if you carry mutations in either one of these two genes. Now I understand there's a very wide variety of published numbers in the scientific literature in terms of the likelihood of developing breast and ovarian cancer and that depends on what type of population the study was undertaken in but these are some of your averages and the point here is that whether the mutations are found in either the low penetrance genes or high penetrance disease development genes you can assess all of these mutations with what is referred to as gene panels gene panels is basically a selection of the genes to be sequenced and or looked at and it can involve either just one gene to up to thousands of genes